Today we are looking at the dialysis lab and this fits into some concepts we are working on in lecture right now related to solutions. We'll be looking at diffusion, which is the movement of solutes from high concentration to low concentration, and osmosis is similar movement but of water. Um, so in this experiment, um, we are going to be making a setup that looks something like this. So we are going to have a large beaker and inside of it um, we are going to have some dialysis tubing. And this dialysis tubing is meant to mimic the portion of a dialysis machine that has blood in it. And then surrounding that is um, going to be, in our case, water, but what we would call in a dialysis um, setup the dialysate. And so the idea um, with dialysis, as you may have seen in another video, is for solutes that are in the blood to be able to move out of the blood into the dialysate, and in doing so you clean the blood out. So the things that we're going to put into our blood today are sodium chloride, so sodiums and chlorides. Um, we'll also put glucose, and then we will also put starch, and starch is a huge, huge long polymer um, of glucose molecules. So um, we're going to put all of those into our blood. Um, one of the things you clean out in dialysis is salt. Um, you don't want to lose much glucose during dialysis, so we'll be looking at that. And we're going to see which of those moves across um, this membrane. Now this membrane is what we call semi-permeable. Um, so that means if I could look up close at the membrane, it would have small holes in it. Um, so this is what we call a semi-permeable membrane. So if I can think about the things that are inside of the blood um, and quantify them a little bit, um, one of the ways to quantify how big substances are is looking at their um, molar masses. So sodium um, has a mass of 22.99, chloride 35.45, and this would be in grams per mole. Um, glucose has a molar mass of around 180. And then starch is about a thousand glucoses all stuck together. So that would be 180,000 in terms of size. So we can see that these are very small, larger, and then starch is enormous. And we wanna think about which of those would be able to move through these small holes faster. Um, you can probably have a good educated guess on that right now. Um, so what we're going to do is make this blood solution pour water over it, and throughout the lab today, this will be called the surroundings. This will be called the blood, even though it's not real blood. Um, and we're going to see which of those three substances are able to diffuse from high concentration to low concentration. At the same time, something that we can't measure is that there would be water moving by osmosis into this bag, um, and that would be to try and dilute all of those solutes. So that's kind of a picture of what we're going to be doing today. And before we leave this picture, um, we're going to be skipping part A today. Um, but for part B, it will be as you see in the picture here. And then in part C, we will characterize or test um, our blood and also the surroundings to see what moved into those surroundings. So that's the game plan for the day. So if we move back to the lab experiment, um, our question today that we're going to answer is what chemicals can move across a dialysis membrane and which direction can they move? So can they move from the blood to the surroundings, surroundings to the blood? Um, we've got all kinds of equipment and you don't have to get any of it. I did it for you. Um, you can wear whatever shoes you want today um, because you're just sitting at home. Um, so. Looking at your experiment, 
um, we're going to skip this part A today. Um, and you will see in the videos um, that there are going to be six test tubes throughout this. Um, two of the test tubes will be used to study the blood before and after. So I could color those pink just to remind me that that's going to be the blood. Um, and then the surroundings will be that surrounding piece of this picture here. So we'll see what actually moves out of the blood and into those surroundings. Um, so you will see in the video um, that we mix together three things, five mils of sodium chloride, five mils of glucose, and five mils of starch. Um, and that's what's going to go into the blood. Um, and then you will put that into that tubing that has the small holes in it, the semi-permeable membrane. After you've done that, um, you're going to collect some of those surroundings at 1 minute and 20 minutes and 40 minutes. So you'll see those in the video. And then at the end, you'll take that tube of blood and dump it um, into a test tube. Um, this says test tube 6, but it should be test tube 2. That second test tube gets the, the blood in it. So then in part C, like I said, we're going to identify what was in the dialysis. So you're going to see um, as the lab is worked that there are a lot of test tubes. Um, we'll have big ones that we do the glucose test, and then a small set with starch and a small set with chloride. So we'll take the same solution here. Um, so if the solution is here, we'll dump some of it into a small test tube and some of it into another small test tube. So all three of these are from test tube 1 and all three of these are from test tube two. Here's the tests that you're going to see done today. Um, make sure that you make careful observations as you do them. Um, glucose identification, we're gonna add Benedict's solution, heat them, and this is what we want to see. If it's positive, we will see a solid form, and here are the colors that you will see. They tell you the percentage of sugar. Um, starch will be very simple, um, so we're going to add iodine. If the test is positive, the solution is going to turn dark blue, otherwise there's no starch present. Um, and then lastly with chloride, um, we're going to add silver nitrate, and if it's positive for chloride, we will see a white solid form. Turns out sodium isn't very reactive, so it's a lot easier to test for the chloride moving and then we would assume that the sodium moved with it if the chloride moves. So from there, here's your data sheet. This is what you're going to turn in. Um, if you work with somebody, please do write your partner's name, but also write your name. We're not doing part A today, um, but you will fill in observations um, for part C here. Um, so make sure that you have observations. That's going to be colors in particular, or is it cloudy, or is it very thick and white. Um, and this would also then, is it positive? So like, is there glucose present or is it negative? So make sure you have both of those to get full credit on your observations. The videos do move quickly, so you might need to pause or replay them a couple times to see um, what's happening. So you will write down um, observations on all of these, and then you will be thinking about, as you have observed this, um, we're looking for, did something move from the blood into the surroundings? So if I have starch, say here and here, that doesn't mean any movement happened. But if I have starch in the blood and then I end up with starch showing up outside of the blood, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for, do these solutes move out into the dialysate? Do they diffuse? Um, that's the point of what we're looking at here. And once you've done that, then you'll be ready to write. Um, you're gonna write two things here. Um, so our question is what chemicals can move across a dialysis membrane and what direction can they move? Um, meaning do they move into the blood or out of the blood according to what you see here? Um, we aren't gonna have data from part A, but you should have three segments to what you write about. So you should talk about if the chloride moved, and if the glucose moved, and if the starch moved. And remember, you want to make a claim the chloride did move out of the membrane. The evidence is it showed up in surroundings test tubes two, three, and four, 
where we saw a white cloudy solid. Um, you wouldn't say test tube two actually, but make sure on each of these um, you have some kind of claim and then you have evidence and the evidence is gonna be from your test tube observations and be specific with those. And then finally, um, ask a follow-up question. It's a little bit harder because you're not in lab, but um, brainstorm with a friend. You can private message in Zoom or meet up and talk about it. Um, but what would you be curious to try? Um, what would be interesting to you? Different chemicals, different setup, um, different volumes, things like that. Um, when you're finished, you will scan, take a picture of this page 41 and 42 and upload them on Canvas. So have fun.